to Melbourne for his uh, contribution. I call the member for Ford. Well, thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. And um, uh, as much as I could say on that contribution, but I'll, uh, I, I shan't. Um, <clears throat> for someone who represents uh, an electorate and a community that hosts some 216 different cultures, I'm proud to say that we very rarely, if ever, see discord and division. I'm blessed to live in a community where those cultures work together harmoniously and, better for the, and for the betterment of the community for all involved. The events of Christchurch a couple of weeks ago <coughs> are a sad indictment of the lengths that some people can go to to treat their fellow human beings so poorly, with such disregard and such disdain. In my electorate, Mr Deputy Speaker, I have a population who's of 6% or more whose heritage is, is Maori or New Zealander, according to the 2016 census. As one of the abiding privileges of living in Australia and our relationship with New Zealand that goes back so many years, that we, all of us in our communities have a, number of, a large number of people that have a New Zealand Maori heritage and equally, there would be many Australians that live in the New Zealand community. My fellow chair of the Australian New Zealand Parliamentary Friendship Group, uh, Joel Fitzgibbon, and I uh, <coughs> took the opportunity shortly after that atrocity occurred to contact the New Zealand High Commissioner, Dame Annette King, and pass on our condolences. Uh, and we also wrote uh, to the High Commissioner and to the New Zealand Government and people to express our condolences and support for the New Zealand community. I think as many others have done, Mr Deputy Speaker, all we can do in this place is condemn such a senseless act at the Al Noor and Linwood Mosques in Christchurch on the 15th of March, which claimed the lives of 50 innocent men, women and children. My prayers and thoughts go out to all of those affected and to the whole of New Zealand. But equally, Mr Deputy Speaker, my thoughts and prayers are with my local Muslim community, including those at the Eagleby, Kotku Mosque and the Batu Masor Mosque. And I've met with an, a number of those uh, people over the past couple of weeks, just in general conversations, and passed on my condolences and, <coughs> pardon me, and thoughts to them. But as I said at the outset, Mr Deputy Speaker, one of the great things about the community in which I live is that I don't see the things that sadly the member for Melbourne spoke about earlier. I see a community that is united, that seeks to ensure that the issues that maybe occur in other communities do not occur in ours, irrespective of race, religion, colour, creed. <clears throat> we work extraordinarily hard to ensure that we have that community harmony and unity. And I want to call out I want to call out the fact that there is no place in our communities for the hatred that was demonstrated in Christchurch. Because events like that do nothing to build the cohesiveness and uh, integrity in our society and our community that we need as a country or countries to move forward. As somebody who grew up in a migrant family, my parents came to Australia in the mid-1960s. <clears throat> I've had a variety of experiences as, as somebody uh, from, from a migrant family, and I can say some of those weren't 
always pleasant. But I've tried, Mr Deputy Speaker, to not let those experiences define me. And I'm very conscious of, with my background, to ensure that when I see those things happening in my community, I'll call them out. Because I'm always focused on ensuring that those new arrivals in our country, and I'm sure all of us in this place, we have the privilege of attending our citizenship ceremonies. We get to meet some wonderful people who have sought to make Australia their new home. And we welcome them with open arms. And we say that during our ceremony. But it is not just about saying those words at those citizenship ceremonies, is actually about demonstrating and living that on a day-to-day -day basis in our communities. Those people have come here to create a new life for themselves, to, to be able to live free of fear, for many of them have come from very difficult circumstances overseas. As we saw with the attacks in Christchurch, and other events that we've seen here in Australia. These people who desire to do our community harm and to break those bonds in our community that actually make it what it is today <coughs> have no place. I'm pleased to say, Mr Deputy Speaker, and uh, with the support of those across the other side, that we are seeing steps also being taken to reduce the ability for the social media platform or for these that undertake these sort of acts of terror and other violent uh, activities to reduce their capacity or eliminate their capacity for those to be spread through social media. And this is incredibly important, Mr Deputy Speaker, because what the ability that is provided through these platforms is that it can encourage others to undertake the same acts. And uh, I know the member for Melbourne Ports in, in his um, valedictory speech uh, the other day touched on the fact that uh, these social media platforms, in a lot of cases, we don't even know if they're real people that are on those platforms. And I think that was a very valid point by the member for Melbourne Ports. So I think, Mr Deputy Speaker, the steps that all of us are taking in this place uh, around in that space, I hope in time will help improve the situation. But more importantly, and I think the most important step we can take as members of our community is to continue to engage with our communities to ensure that we encourage them to continue to work together and respect all in our communities, irrespective of their background, their values, their beliefs. Because we can always learn from others. And I say that to school kids regularly. Be prepared to learn from others. And first and most importantly, treat others as you would have them treat you. We are all human beings who want to lead a safe, prosperous life, not only for ourselves, but for our families, for our kids. And we all want a better future for our communities. My heart goes out to the families in Christchurch who have lost their loved ones. My thoughts and prayers are with them. I know the New Zealand government <coughs> is doing a tremendous job to help support those families in a very difficult time. And I hope that they also know that they have the full support of the Australian community as well. My friends in the New Zealand community in my electorate of Ford uh, also know that they have our support in this very difficult circumstance. I'd like to thank all of those in my community who have taken the time out to pass on their thoughts and condolences to the families and the community of New Zealand as well. I think we should be very proud of our country and our multicultural 
society. Are there issues and concerns? Yes. And sadly, there will always be people who seek to do harm. But provided we stay strong as a community and also look at the good that occurs, I think our society and our community can be so much better as a result. To the people of New Zealand, my heartfelt condolences and sympathies. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Thank you, Mr.